We have heard about microservices and frameworks which are used to design microservices. Have you heard the term micro framework? In the last few years, we have seen Spring Boot and Vertex making the breakthrough with creation of microservices using these frameworks. Let's see what is micro framework and why is it gaining popular among the startups or the small companies which are creating fast and robust applications in the cloud. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primus. Micro Framework, as the name suggests, is used to refer small web applications with limited set of libraries or features which are embedded inside that particular framework. If you consider Spring Boot, Spring Boot is not a micro framework because it has lots of additional features apart from what we need in order to make a service run just like that. Right? However, micro framework is a term which is used to refer minimalistic web application frameworks. If you take a look at the Wikipedia website, it also says the same thing. It is just another framework but with minimal features in order to make your application run and get you up to speed in order to develop web applications in order to fulfill your functionality. These frameworks are useful when you are creating APIs which are specific to HTTP and when you are doing API specific development or cloud native development then it is pretty useful because you can get these servers out very quickly. Why people are doing going towards micro framework nowadays? It is due to the evolution of these container based frameworks like docker and kubernetes if you want to create uh, different docker images if you provide a spring boot application which already has a tomcat and then you will have to create an image it provides lots of features for that particular small microservice however if let's say your service is specific or bound to only a particular set of domain or a particular set of feature then you can go for micro framework where you know what you have and you will be using what you need so that way you will have a minimalistic application and with the introduction of serverless architecture it is necessary for an application to come up very quickly. If you take an example of Spring Boot it takes a while to come up. However Vertex is faster than Spring Boot in order to make your system completely boot up within seconds. Micro frameworks are ahead of Vertex as well. It is much faster because if you need a serverless architecture and if you go to Amazon Lambda or function as a service provided by Pivotal then you will have to make sure your applications are much faster and they can be spawned within seconds. So in order to go there micro frameworks are required. If let's say you are creating a service which is just going to provide a specific functionality and you don't have to keep that running always then you can create a microservice with the help of micro framework. You can choose any of the frameworks which are available out there. In this video, we are going to see five different frameworks which are popular and it is used in the JVM. The first one is called Micronaut. Micronaut is another JVM based framework. It has also the support for UI. It is a completely full stack framework. However, it is a micro framework. You can either use Java, Groovy or Kotlin in order to create this particular application. Right? This is an example of how you will write code inside Micronaut. It exactly looks like Spring Boot or in fact Spring MVC to be specific. However, you don't get heavyweight features like how Spring does, like the Spring's interceptors and stuff like that. It is very basic and it just gets your server up and running as quickly as possible. So these are similar examples of how you can write and then test your application. See, this is a test, how you can write a test. This is a specification test which you will be writing in Groovy or in fact you can write it in Kotlin as well. So it has a native support for Java, Groovy and Kotlin. All these are JVM languages. So if you are familiar with any one of these, you can choose from that. It also provides native cloud support. So if you are creating Micronaut framework, then you can easily integrate that with any of these cloud platforms. It also has seamless support to other uh, design patterns. For example, Eureka and Zipkin as well. If you need to connect to the databases or any external sources then you will have to configure these and then you will have to use the toolkits or the libraries which are available 
which can be integrated when and whenever you want. There is no necessity for you to get these out of the box, but you can integrate that whenever you need. So see here, there are access to Neo4j's NoSQL, the Cassandra, Redis, MongoDB, and Hibernate. The next framework is called Spark Java. Spark is another micro framework which is used for creating web applications using the Kotlin language and Java 8. As it says, it with the minimal effort. So you can write a web application with just what? Four, five lines of code. That's it. You can create a web application which just says hello world with a rest endpoint says, which says hello within just like four lines. And in Kotlin, it is just much, much more simpler. You can just leverage the power of Kotlin language in order to create these as quickly as possible. I'm not going to go to in depth of what each uh, framework does, but um, this is another framework where you can use Kotlin. If you're working on Kotlin and if you want to create a micro framework, then Spark is your choice. The next language which uses Kotlin in conjugation with Java is the Java Lin. This is another micro framework which is used for creating web applications. It is exactly similar to um, Spark. However, it uses its own way of creating web applications. So see here, it just says Java Lin dot app and app dot uh, get and then sit, uh, context dot results or whatever it does. All these frameworks, whatever we are seeing, these are all lightweight. The only difference would be the way they are implemented, the way you can use them, the way adoption has been gone through in these open source frameworks. So this uses a declarative style for creating your application. This is similar to how Vertex is written, right? It's, it's like a builder pattern and then you can create your uh, routes and paths and stuff like that. The next one is called Tor. I don't know how do I spell it, Core or Tor, uh, however you want it. This is again a merger of Kotlin and Java. However, you will be writing it in Kotlin specifically. So it will be running on the JVM but you will be writing completely in Kotlin language. See this, this is an example of a Kotlin file. It is also declarative. You can write something like embedded server, routing, get, and then just say, this is my Rust server. So all these frameworks are very simplistic. You will be writing in a simpler fashion with no fancy annotations or no fancy configurations or something like that. The idea of these frameworks, as I said earlier, are to make your applications flexible and simple and fast enough to boot within seconds. So Tor is another framework which uses Kotlin language specifically. So you will be writing code only on Kotlin in this. And all these are asynchronous calls. So you can create asynchronous programming within these frameworks. The last one is the Drop Wizard. Drop Wizard is another framework which people had been already using it, but um, it is very lightweight as well compared to the Spring Boot and other frameworks which are out there for creating microservices. These frameworks are very lightweight and Drop Wizard is one among them. It also has lots of support towards configuration, application metrics, monitoring, logging, etc. So this is just a basic video of understanding what is micro framework and why we need micro framework and what are the different micro frameworks which are available out there. Not all these micro frameworks are used by enterprise applications or enterprise firms. These are newly created and these are evolving. People are trying out and since serverless free, serverless frameworks and the container based frameworks are in evolution, these frameworks are adopted very slowly. Once we get serverless architecture and container based architectures more popular, we will be able to see these frameworks evolving in due course of time. If you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.